everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be looking at 10 art accessories that I find useful to have around. You may have some of these supplies already and some of them may be new to you but if you draw, paint, craft and create then you might find an accessory in today's video that may be useful. And on a quick note I just want to say that I'm not sponsored by any of the brands or companies that I talk about in this video. I just use all these tools all the time and I find them very helpful for different techniques. So the first accessory is an acrylic block. If you've watched many of my videos, especially the mixed media ones, then you would have seen me using this supply before. I have two acrylic blocks here in a large and a smaller size. I just like having two different sizes so I can work on different papers and get different effects. So an, an acrylic block is useful for different techniques and you can use it with different water-based supplies. One of my favourite ways to use an acrylic block is to scribble colour onto the block with a water-based markers or with water-based inks and then give the block a quick spritz with a water bottle and then stamp the block down onto the paper. This gives a splattery mixed media effect and it gives a really cool looking background. It's also completely random and so no matter how many times you did this effect, each time would be different. I make a lot of backgrounds this way. An acrylic block can also be used as a mixing surface for watercolours, water-based markers and inks. You can scribble the colours onto the block and then mix different colours together, watercolours down, and then just use the acrylic block as a painting palette and all the paints will wash off afterwards. But I don't use alcohol based markers on the acrylic block because they will tend to stain it. I also like to use the acrylic block for stamping and this is what the, the ones that I have here are sold as stamping blocks so if you have acrylic stamps you can put them onto the acrylic block and then just stamp with them. You can normally find these little acrylic blocks in a craft or scrapbooking shops. They're normally sold in the scrapbooking aisle of these shops and they're sold with the stamps. The second supply is a water bottle spritzer. I really love this tool and I use it to create different effects with my paints and markers. I often spray it directly onto my watercolours just to moisten and help to activate the paints before I start painting. I also spray directly onto the paper to add a fine mist of extra water and this can help colours to blend or sometimes I even spray to wet the paper first before adding the paints and then I just drop different colours into the wet paper. The nice thing about this tool is that it creates a very fine and even mist of water and that would be very hard to get with a paintbrush. I also like to colour directly onto the paper. Here I'm using water-based markers and distress inks and once I've put some colour onto the paper I spray it with the spray bottle to move and blend the colours and because the water is a very fine mist I can add as little or as much as I need to control the blending. A spray bottle is also perfect if you're working with brush powder. If you haven't heard of it, this, it's a pigment powder that you can activate with water to create beautiful paintings. And if you'd like a review or demonstration video on it, let me know because I, I'm thinking of making a video on this at some point. But anyway, for, work, for working with brush powder, you can just spray it with the spray bottle and it releases lots of vibrant colour. So for working with water-based supplies and paints, markers and inks, then a spray bottle is one of my essential supplies. So next I have a small dropper bottle and this is a fun supply for mixing colours, particularly ink colours and for creating interesting mixes. You can mix the inks and then store them in these little bottles. So for Inktober for example I mixed several shades of grey, I had black ink and then watered it down with water to create different tones and different grades and then I stored them all in the little bo bottles and just took a little bit out at a time when I needed it. Now I tend to use a little mini palette and then drop a, a drop of the ink into the palette and then paint with it that way but you can apply the ink straight from the bottle to the paper and you can even actually sort of draw with the dropper part of the bottle and create some interesting effects that way. I also use one of these bottles to store some rubbing alcohol in which I use to create some effects with my Copic markers. The next gadget is a marker airbrush and this is perfect if you like creating splatters. I have a separate in-depth review video for this tool and I'll leave a link in the iCards if you'd like to watch that. But basically with this tool you can use any type of marker and you, all you do is you put the marker into the airbrush and you can create lots of different splatters. You can use water-based markers, alcohol-based markers, pretty much any marker will work with this tool. You get different splatters depending on the type of marker, the type of nib and 
understand how close you hold the pen to the paper. So for a dense splatter effect, you need to hold the airbrush close to the paper. And then for a scattered splatter, you hold the airbrush higher up. You can also fit Copics and larger markers into the airbrush. What you need to do is unscrew the screw at the, at the top of it and pull out that little inner tube and then this allows bigger markers to fit in. You'll also want to protect the rest of your workspace if you're using this tool as splatters tend to travel just like they do if you're using a paintbrush. I usually lay down a couple of sheets of scrap paper to protect my desk when I'm working with this. A putty rubber or eraser is a ver another very useful accessory. This is a moldable eraser and it picks up the graphite off the surface of the paper. It's good because you can mold, you can kind of mold the eraser into different shapes depending on what you want to rub out. It doesn't leave any little uh, rubber bits behind after you've rubbed something out and it also doesn't tend to damage the surface of the paper. I find on the whole that the putty erasers do not rub out quite as good as like a normal rubber does but it, because it picks up the graphite off the paper it's great for toning down sketches so if you have a sketch and then you want to partially rub out the lines but you want to leave just enough of the outline there so you can actually see it then rolling a putty rubber over the surface will do this the next tool is a blending stamp you can get these in different sizes and they're usually made out of rolled up paper they're very good for blending and smudging graphite pencils and pastels you can just use the stump to move and feather out the graphite and I like to work in small circular motions because I find that that produces the smoothest blend. Having a couple of these blending stumps around is very handy if you work a lot in graphite or you like to add some shading and dimension to your sketches. I picked up this pencil sharpener recently and it's become my favourite sharpener now because you can adjust the length of how long the pencil tip will be once you've sharpened it. Now for me this this is useful because sometimes I have coloured pencils that are broken or prone to breaking. I have a couple of Prismacolors that are like this and if I sharpen the tip of one, one of those pencils to a long tip the lead tends to break off when I'm using it but with this sharpener I can set it so that it will only sharpen the pencil to a very small point and this really does help to stop the lead from breaking and it also eats up less of the pencil. Sometimes when you're sharpening a coloured pencil and you're sharpening it to a very long point it eats up so much of your pencil and you tend to use up the pencils a lot quicker whereas if you sharpen them to a smaller point you use the pencil you use up less of the pencil sharpening it in other words you can get five different lengths with this sharpener you so you can get a very small tip or a very long one depending on what you want and the shavings are all stored inside and to empty them you just pull off the back and empty out the sharpener I will, I'll leave a list of all the accessories with the names of the different brands in the description box below if you want to know the exact brand of each of the supplies that I'm using today. This is a very useful pencil sharpener to have and I've been using it with my graphite pencils, my wax based pencils and my oil based pencils. It seems to work quite well with all of them. This next tool is also connected to pencils and it's a pencil extender. So I have lots of very small little pencil stubs. There's still some lead left, but the pencil has become too small for me to be able to use it. So I got a pack of these pencil extenders and you can just place the little pencil stubs into the extender, tighten it up, and then you can use that pencil again. This is a very simple little accessory, but it really helps me to get the most out of my colored pencils and helps me to use up all the lead. This next accessory is a pencil eraser. So instead of having a lead inside this pencil, it has a rubber or an eraser in it. This is helpful if you want to rub out just one tiny detail in a sketch and you don't want to accidentally rub out the rest of the drawing. I do find that this rubber is not very good at rubbing out larger areas. It doesn't rub out as well as a regular rubber, but it is a very useful tool to have, especially if you need to be very precise when you rub something out. You can sharpen it down and get a, a fine point and just rub out something very small. And it's very good for getting into little corners as well. So it's just something useful to have. The last accessory I have here are these sponge dabbers. They're very useful for using with acrylic paint, gouache or inks. They're sponges that have little wooden handles and you can get different textures and effects by dabbing them into the paint and then applying them to your surface. They're really good for getting seamless blends, particularly with acrylic paint. I use them mostly for acrylic paint and you can get, you can blend different colours together and you don't leave any brush strokes 
strokes behind so they're very useful I find for doing things like backgrounds where you want a seamless blend of colour with nothing no distracting brush strokes or texture in it. They're also really good for stenciling as well as you can lay your stencil down and then just dab the paint directly down through the stencil. Paint brushes on the whole don't work very well with stencils um, unless you have a, a special stencil brush but these are particularly good for using with stencils. And I also have one more tool to show with you all. Now this is a 10 accessory video but I had to include this one as well as a sort of a bonus accessory to mention because it's actually really important and I use it all the time and that is these colour sharpeners or silicon brushes. They're called different things by different manufacturers and you can often find them in the clay making section of an art shop or they're you know they're often sold as a clay making supply but I've seen them in other sections as well they are perfect for using with masking fluid. Now masking fluid, if you don't know, tends to ruin paint brushes. It dries up and clumps on the bristles and you cannot get it off your paintbrush. So once you've used a paintbrush with masking fluid, you've ruined your paintbrush really. Um, now there are some hacks that I've heard people talking about for how to save your paintbrushes and I've seen people coat their paintbrushes in soap first before using it but what I use to save my paintbrushes is to use these silicon brushes instead because you can peel the dried masking fluid straight off these silicon brushes and you can also get a very fine line with the brushes and I just find them really easy to use and much easier than trying to remember to coat all my paintbrushes and uh, soap before using them but I just find this, these really handy and if you use masking fluid a lot with your paintings and you do a lot of watercolouring and you use masking fluid then getting a couple of these silicon brushes may, may be really useful. So those are my top 10 top 11 art accessories these are all ones that I personally find really handy to have around and the ones that I've shown in this video apply to quite a lot of different medias so some of the accessories uh, you can use with paint some are for markers some are for pencils I like to use a lot of mixed media so a lot of the accessories and tools that I have I use with multiple different things. Now of course you don't need to have any of these tools but they are all useful for different techniques and I thought it would be fun to share them with you today as I don't see many videos that are on art accessories as opposed to art supplies and the nice thing about a lot of these supplies is that you can use them with multiple uh, things so a pencil extender you buy one and you can use it with every type of pencil you have and the same thing goes for the marker airbrush or the acrylic block you can you can use them in lots of different ways so a lot of them are quite good investments or at least I find that they are I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any accessories or tools that you find really useful, then make sure you leave a comment down below and share your recommendations with us all. I'd love to hear what your top um, art accessories or art tools are. As always, everyone, have a creative day and I will see you next time.